Google released their data science agent for Google Colab powered by Gemini. It doesn't just generate snippets of code, but it generates fully functional Colab notebooks with complete and executable code. Once it generates the solutions, you can still modify, customize, and edit the code as you see fit. And you can share the results for collaboration with your teammates. I was part of a group of trusted testers for this agent. So let's take a look. You can do that by going to collab.research.google.com. You can open an existing notebook or create a new one by clicking on this new notebook button in the bottom left corner of the model here. Since we already have a notebook, we're going to use that. When you create a new notebook, you can change the title of it at the top here and this will save to your Google Drive as you can see with this icon. So in order to use the data science agent, click on this Gemini icon in the top right corner and it'll open up a new panel here. With this, you can upload your data, drag and drop your files here and then ask it a question like based on this data attached. We're wondering why did customers purchase less frequently during the post period. So right now it's composing a plan that it'll provide and you can review the plan. So that includes data loading, exploring the data to see what's in the file, data wrangling, data analysis, creating visuals from the data, and then finishing the task by summarizing the findings. If the plan looks good to you, click on execute plan and it'll go through each task to find a solution. You can see the status of each task in the right panel here, and then it'll begin creating sections in the Colab notebook. So we can see that it's begun loading the data into Pandas data frames. Now it's carrying out the data exploration tasks, checking for duplicates and missing values. And Google Colab is wrangling the data. It looks like it ran into an error realizing that one of the fields doesn't exist in the visits data frame. Google Colab has performed the data analysis. So it splits the data up into the post period and the pre period. And then now it's working on the data visualizations, giving us total purchases by period. In the summary, it noted that there was a lower purchase frequency in the post period compared to the pre period but it couldn't determine the reason why that was because we didn't provide context around the nature of the A-B test as we only fed Google Colab a pretty simple prompt. This time we're providing more details, more background around the A-B test, including changes to a specific content page and some other details. We also provided more guidance around the types of data including the aggregate data by demographic groups. So hopefully it can provide us with some better findings. You'll see in some of the steps, it gives you suggested next steps as well, like generating code with the conversion rate comparison, viewing recommended plots, or creating new interactive sheets, etc. Let's take a look at the data visualizations for this. The first one we have is a bar chart comparing the overall conversion rates. In the post period, we have a conversion rate of 8.8%, while the peer period has a conversion rate of 11.9%. I calculated some of the metrics in the actual spreadsheet. Google Colab was correct with the post period overall conversion rate. However, it was off a little bit for the pre period overall conversion rate. That is actually 12.2% instead of 11.9%. Here are some other data visualization for the different segments, different customer segments. Then we have this one for the marketing channels for organic 
and paid traffic. In the pre-period, for organic traffic, we have 12.5%. And in the post-period, 12.4%. So that's about the same. And then in the pre-period for the paid channels, it's 11.3% conversion rate, while the post-period, 2.5%. If we take a look at our data visualization, we see the organic traffic is about the same. So you won't see much difference for a bar chart here for the paid traffic. So that looks to be about 11.3%, 11%. And then the post period looks like it's around 2%. However, this probably isn't the best data visualization as a stacked bar chart for this specific combination of metrics and channels. Here are some other data visualizations. Now we come to the summary. So the analysis indicates a decrease in overall conversion rates with several segments in geographic regions showing significant drops. While the paid channel showed an increase in conversions, the overall trend points toward a negative impact. And that's exactly what we saw in our data. Specifically, millennial shoppers and Maryland customers saw the most pronounced decreases in conversion rates. So looking at our data, Maryland customers 12.8, millennial customers 12.3 versus 7.7 .7 and 8.1 in the post period. Virginia customers and baby boomers, 10.7, 9.7. Baby boomers, 9% and 13.3. So Virginia customers actually increased. It did miss the silent generation, however. It highlights some of the key findings and then some of the next steps where you could further investigate to find more insights. Unfortunately, agentic interactions with Google Colab and this data science agent currently is impossible. Right? You're not able to continue asking it questions about the data to find more insights. But I do have insider information that it is on the roadmap. But as you can see, it does provide you with the code to try. And if you want to create another plan of analysis, you have to close this panel and then click on Gemini logo again. Now we're asking Google Colab and the data science agent to create a machine learning model to predict what kind of customers will return to purchase more based on this CSV file of e-commerce order records. Data science executes the feature engineering step. It splits the data into training, testing, and validation data sets, trains the three specified classification models for logistic regression, random forest, and gradient boosting classifiers, optimizes the hyperparameters, it evaluates the performance of the optimized models, provides the data and the metrics around optimization. And the cool thing about this is you can see it evaluate the code in real time. So if there are any errors, you'll see indicators of that even when the code blocks are running. Finally, we have the summary. The data science agent notes that the results show perfect performance across all three models and it suggests a potential issue with the data. And that's correct as over 90% of customers in the data set made repeat purchases. For this example, we want to create a machine learning model to analyze the effectiveness of a marketing campaign at each step. The agent trains the random forest classifier, optimizes the model, evaluates the model, and creates data visualizations to convey the relationship between 
the most important features and the target variable. We have the feature importances for the random forest classifier in the first visualization and then scatter plots of the top three features versus the target feature. The agent highlights that a combination of actions rather than individual steps appear to significantly impact the overall outcome. So those are the campaign list subscription along with the campaign purchase conversion and then the find the store action along with the campaign purchase conversion and then the overall conversions across the entire campaign. Like any other chat bot or chat assistant, you want to make sure you're using best practices for prompt engineering. So you want to avoid generic prompts, make sure you provide enough details, enough context. For the data itself, make sure you format it using best practices. So it might help to split up data sets into their own separate tabs. And then as you're prompting the data science agent, you can provide details around the data set as well. What the data includes, what it doesn't include, and any other insights you can provide the agent that'll help avoid errors and help the execution plan run smoothly. If you found this useful, like the video and leave a comment. If you want more content on AI, workflow automation, and analytics, subscribe to the channel.